to ask you, can you identify what each muscle does in the dorsal apparatus? I think this is a very difficult question. We're going to try to tease this apart and hopefully at the end of this presentation it will be a bit clearer. Let's look at what each muscle does. Well, this is a bit of a pun, but it is joint effort. In other words, it's teamwork. Here is a wispy uh, specimen of the dorsal apparatus, PIP joint, DIP, MP. You can imagine that nothing is going to work without another part having tension on it. One of the reasons that there can be highly variable anatomy in the dorsal apparatus is the fact that if one muscle isn't working or one part of the anatomy isn't there, another can spontaneously take over to influence this entire system. The other thing to keep in mind is that muscles are not simple structures. They're highly complex and one muscle can have a number of different roles. Um, it doesn't just do one thing all the time. It can be an agonist or antagonist or it can be a stabilizer. In the finger at any one time there are always several dis different muscles that are active and I would offer that they're often playing different roles depending on what the finger is specifically doing. At the metacarpal phalangeal joint, we have an extrinsic extensor that is extending it, but our primary flexors, not the only flexors, but the primary flexors, are intrinsic muscles, both the lumbrical and the interosseous. The interosseous primarily, the lumbrical very secondary. At the interphalangeal joint, both the extrinsic and intrinsic muscles are all extending these joints. Think how extraordinary this is. In these two joints, the extrinsic and intrinsic muscles are all doing the same effect. But just one joint proximal and adjacent, these same muscles are crossing over this joint, but two of them are acting in the opposite direction. This, it is this fact that creates great complexity, particularly as one endeavors to understand this. So we could draw this out by saying that extension has the extensor digitorum communis, and I have placed these in the order that I find that they usually take priority. I would say that our primary PIP extensor is interosseous, lumbrical, and lastly EDC, because remember it's busy here. And distally we have the lumbrical as primary, interosseous secondary, EDC the weakest because it has to come all the way out, and perhaps there's also a passive contribution of the oblique retinactor ligament. Inflection of the metacarpal phalangeal joint the interosseous is definitely always the primary MP joint flexor, the lumbrical, secondary, and FDS and FDP, but only after they have flexed these two joints. They, in certain circumstances, they certainly can be primary, but not usually. Yes, FDS and FDP at the PIP joint, and the FDP is the only flexor force at the DIP joint. 